Hey everybody, welcome to our first Pinterest Pintastic video. I'm kind of excited to be here this morning doing this and hopefully going to be able to teach everyone um, some of the things I've learned over the last couple months. And today we're going to be talking about eye-catching pins. What can, makes an eye-catching pin? What is going to cause a pin to be repinned a lot? That's obviously what we're looking for. And so we're going to be talking about the basics of not only how to create your own and what to be looking for when you're creating your own, but also what to be looking for when you're repinning. And so we're going to discuss some of that today. Obviously, the first basic rule of creating a good pin or finding a good pin to repin is the quality of the photograph. You obviously want the photograph to be, you know, quality, decent looking, not something that, you know, doesn't catch your eye basically. You're looking for things that catch your eye. Right away my eye is drawn to this one here. Even though that's not a large photo, which we're going to talk about that later, I, I see that one because, uh, and this one, obviously anything that looks yummy is probably going to catch your eye first. And although these are great on these multi, you know, link roundups, you know, I know a lot of the times in the VA for Hire group they're selling these. I have not had great re repins on these. I think because when people are repinning, they're looking for either a large photograph or a multi-step photograph. They're not like over here with the s'mores. They're not looking for many tiny photographs within a photograph. That's just, that's not, even though that's a cute, really great idea, you know, kind of post, I think it would do better on the blog itself than it would be for a pin. So basically when you're pinning, the steps that I've learned are the ones that pin the best are multi-step, tall, long pins are the ones that get repinned the most statistically. Like if you were to look at all pins, they get repinned the most. However, the other ones that go viral and do really well are pins that are larger and generally have at least some text on them. So obviously, while wow, this person is really putting a lot into my feed here of this M&M, &M, um, yeah, oh my goodness, look at that, there's like 10 of them. But anyways, um, that is obviously not going to get, usually get super repinned unless, unless it's either for a contest, which that's actually technically against the rules now anyways, but you can see here it had 11 repins, but I think that's actually the p p person repinning their own pin to their different boards. So obviously an eye-catching pin is going to have great uh, f photographic quality. It's going to have great, maybe some great text on it. It doesn't have to have text. However, something like this to me is actually sort of eye-catching. It's colorful. It's got the pretty colors within the photos. And even though the one above with the wine cork had multiple photos, this one has a lot of color with it, which which makes it more eye-catching to me at least. Down here, recipe. Uh, recipe pins like this or this one over here where the photography isn't done in great lighting that's going to obviously have a better repin um, quality than something like this the homemade gifts I understand people may still repin this that are looking for homemade gift ideas for Christmas but generally speaking the pins that do the best are the ones that have great photographic quality the ones that are taller you want your pictures to be as large as possible um, not width, but height. You want them to be as high as possible to prevent what we saw earlier here on the M&M. You can see what happens when you have a really tiny photograph. You, you kind of want to shy away from that. <clears throat> so I would recommend your photos being at least 400 to 500 megapixels wide and tall if you can. I mean, obviously you want it to be taller than it is wider. That's the other thing about Pinterest because you can see Pinterest naturally kind of puts our photographs into the taller wider frame but if it's not tall enough that's going to get you the difference between this pin here and something like this where the photograph is you know smaller coming through smaller so obviously like I said be making sure that you're looking f when you're creating your own posts and that's something else we're going to talk about today um, is a little bit is pick monkey we're going to get into pick monkey a little bit but also when you're pinning when you're repinning I'm talking about looking through your feed and repinning from other people. You want to pick about 15, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe 15 to 20 pins. Should only take you about, oh, I don't know, maybe 5 to 10 minutes at the most. And you should be pinning quickly from various categories. So I'm going to quickly scan through here and show you what I do every morning 
or at least once a day, I go through and I'm like, okay, this is really, people love the do-it-yourself. I'm going to do the multi-step s'mores. I'm actually going to do that on the cakes, dessert, and candy board. Let me pin that real quick. I like this photographic quality, the burger. Okay, so we'll do this on my food addict. The picture looks great. So I have a recipes board that I'm going to pin that to. I'm going to quickly come down. I have about a bajillion cupcakes, so I'm not going to actually pin that. Even though that's a great pin, I'm not going to do it because I have so many already. The Rosette Christmas Tree Craft, <laughs> I'm torn on that. I probably would not put that in my own house. I like the colors on this. Do it yourself for Christmas vill Christmas jar village. That's actually kind of cute. All right, we'll put that on the on the Christmas board. And a lot of times, you know, I do post out on my own interests. I'm not necessarily always looking to repin everything. Now, even though this is a tiny photo here, I'm going to actually pin this to my to my uh, healthy family eating. Even though that's technically not super healthy, I put all my like kid food ideas on that board. So what I was saying earlier is just because I don't always pin something just because I think it's going to get repin. Sometimes I do it because you know I just like the, I like the photo. So you know, but I do about 15 or 20 of these. Okay, Christmas croutons recipe. Hmm, that's cute. Do I really think that I'm going to ever make those, or most people would take, go to the extent to make? Christmas shaped croutons, probably not. So I'm going to skip that. Uh, I do have a kiddos board, but okay, let's do one since that's a different category there. I want to try and cross multiple categories when I'm pinning. So we'll put that on the kiddos board. Coming down here, coming down. Santa hat pretzels. They're cute. So you can kind of see that as I'm going, I'm judging kind of what I think is worthy for the most part unless like I said it's something that really really catches my eye. Oh Charlie Brown ornament that's cute. I like that. I'm into ornaments this year. I don't know why. Okay so we'll come down to holidays. I've probably and and obviously I did a few I'm going to do more Christmas now because that's the season but I don't want all fifteen all fifteen of them to be necessarily Christmas um once. Okay here pesto avocado and multi or whatever that said, mozzarella. Okay, let's go down to healthy family eating with that one. Now, if I've really felt like I've done too many in one category sometimes, I will actually go up and search for, okay, here's a great example where finally I found a fashion one. I'm going to pin this because it's tall and it's in fashion and I haven't pinned anything else in fashion here this morning yet. even though I probably normally wouldn't if I were taking, because I'm doing the video for you guys, I'm trying to rush here a little bit, I wouldn't normally repin something that somebody else is selling though, just so you know. But if I didn't have time, I might actually go up, or if I had more time, I would actually go up and search fashion and then try to find something quickly in that category. So coming down here, just looking quickly. Do it yourself, no rustle, no so ruffle Christmas tree skirt. While it's not beautiful, I haven't done any sewing. <clears throat> so I'm going to come down to my sewing one and try to cross. Okay, so I've probably done maybe 10. So I get on maybe once or twice a day and do this every day just to kind of go across multiple boards. Um, I try to do it quickly. I don't like to do more than 10 or, like I said, 10 or 15 at a time. I don't want to don't want to clog their boards either and that's why you know it really shouldn't take you that long once you've got your board set up to pin every day so I'm going to take you through my boards a little bit try to show you what I've done to make them as creative as possible obviously I went through it does take time right now if you're just starting to really get into the pinning 15 or 20 a day just get your boards up and start pinning. Those of you that might have, let's say, under 500 followers, just get your board set up, get your titles on there. Don't just start repinning. Don't take the time just yet, maybe, to organize all your boards and find great colorful, colorful color covers for them. Sorry, I can't talk today. 
I guess after teaching all week, my mouth is like, I'm done. Okay, but anyway, so what you want to do is if you have already, you know, if you've already got your boards up and running, you probably want to have maybe between at least 40 to 100 boards. You don't want to go too far over 100. I will tell you when you get to have 15,000, you know, 14,000 followers, you know, whatever you are 13, whatever, you know, above the 10 mark, you do end up getting many boards because, you know, you've been pinning, like right now I have over 3,000 pins. So sometimes, you know, I've had to re recreate a category because, like for example, something that interested me was trifle desserts. I got a trifle bowl last year. I love doing trifle desserts for holidays to take with family. So I had to create, I wanted that board to be separate, not part of cakes, desserts, and candies or part of my recipes because I quickly want to be able to go and find my trifle desserts. You know, and I created several group boards. Um, if you're not part of my three that I have for you guys, I have the blogger foodies, the crafts, and I th the one for group, group kids boards. But anyways, so make sure you're on those three boards as well. But what I'm saying is, so if you're just getting started, you don't want to spend too much time agonizing over your boards right now. You just want to get pinning. Like I said, 15 to 20 pins a day, not all, you know, or more. You don't want to do it all in one setting. You maybe want to span it out if you're going to do a couple repin sessions a day. And then start focusing on your boards. You can see I've gone through and I've tried to pick the most beautiful photos out of every category that I could find or the most eye catching. And, and I also am a little behind here because you can see I really need to move my holiday down and switch it with my Christmas boards. So I'm going to work on that maybe later today. But I tried to also put at the top the boards that I think people are going to, at least in the first row or two, the ones that I pin to the most, the one that I think people are, you know, going to want to look at, or the ones that I want them to go to. You know, like I put freebies at the top because I'm generally posting my own content there. So I want people to see that, you know, when they first come onto my board. So take some time once you've got into the habit of pinning every day, for those of you that, that have just get, are just getting started with your boards, take the time every day to, to pin first and then maybe on a weekend or when you have a couple extra minutes, go in and, and change your boards around. I actually wanted to do something fun and different with my board titles. I put, I wanted them to be, you know, I don't know, just to stand out a little bit. And I saw another blogger or a pinner had done this and I loved it, but they just kind of put periods in between each word, you know, fun times, crafty even though it does make it harder for me to sometimes find it because I'm like, I'm not looking for crafts, I'm looking for fun times. I just wanted something that kind of popped and was catchy that people would think, oh, that's cute, you know, or whatever. Um, and then with holidays, so that I could find them alphabetically, every holiday starts with holidays, and then I usually have either the name of the holiday or something in between, like holiday, fall, fun, Halloween, because I didn't want to have a Halloween board separate from the fall board, I just lumped them all into one, but you don't have to do it that way. You're going to organize your boards, obviously, the way that you want to organize them. So um, so let's walk away here from Pinterest for a few minutes and let's just go to PicMonkey. I'm going to start with PicMonkey. I'll be learning some things with you. I, My grandfather's a professional photographer. He's going to be hopefully teaching me more about Adobe Photoshop here in the upcoming week, so I want to do eventually um, some th something with that, but it's very expensive, and so I generally shy away. I, you know, we're frugal bloggers for the most part, so at least I am. So I tend to stay away from things that cost me a ton of money to maintain every month, and so I use PicMonkey because, I, and I am upgraded to the eight dollar. It's like seven ninety five a month, so it's eight dollars a month where I get the different um, fonts and things, but. Uh, one thing that I love about it is that you can use it for free, and it's great, even even for free. So I'm going to just kind of open something here in PicMonkey, and we're just going to briefly um, talk about it. I want to just use a blank box here to get started. So you open up, a edit a photo like I just showed you. I'm just going to do a blank box here. Normally I would have a picture, but just to play around, you know, obviously you have the crop that you can crop it to whatever size you want. You can resize it, obviously, you know, um, and this is actually how I work with all my photos that I use on my blog from my, my Canon Rebel. I upload them to here because the megapixels are so high, WordPress won't allow me to directly put them into my post. I actually have to edit them and resize them before I can even post them because they're usually in the thousands. So that's why I'm just so used to pick my, it's just quick, it's free, it, the photos turn out great. Um, you can mess with color, sharpen, but again, this obviously is not... The, if you are an avid photography person, 
probably Photoshop is going to be, you know, your thing then because you can do extensive editing with that. Where with something like this, you know, there have been some times where, for example, I did a review post a couple weeks ago about my new Shark Sweeper. From when I went to blog her, I just got this new Shark Sweeper and I wanted it, I took a picture of um, the, the, the sweeper in my ki old kitchen, which is like my laundry room, and the actual, it was beside the vent that comes up from the basement with the heat and the and the paint had completely started wearing off there were little black spots all over the bottom where the paint had worn off it looked terrible in the picture and I wanted to completely blur that out and I couldn't in PicMonkey because they don't have like that complete blur or erase feature or that you can get sometimes with other editing software so please know that while this is awesome for most everyday blogging if you're gonna get super technical it's it's you're gonna want something a little bit more more in depth so I know you can't see all the tools in the side here but that first one brings up the crop the second one um, brings up the effects which I think are really neat they just came out with a lot of these the upgrade ones are the ones with the little king's crown on them just so you know but all the ones that don't have the crown you can use anytime so you know you're gonna be doing effects with different things um, hang on one second let me come down here. And most of you I know already use PicMonkey, so I at least wanted to, to do this for those that don't. I guess I have to actually have a picture on there. So let me come back to that. Okay, um, you can do touch-ups if you have pictures of people's faces. I don't use this a whole lot because in blogging we don't often take, we're not doing, you know, photographs of people at the most part, but the text is really what I'm looking for most of the time. And I kind of have my favorites. I need to branch out a little bit more, but, you know, there are a couple that I like to use a lot of times. And, you know, this is where you can watermark your photos or just at least put your logo on for copyright, you know, and so you can resize, you can center, you know, here's a center button, you can change it, and all, you can bold it, you can italicize it, whatever, let me make that a little bit bigger. Okay, and something else that you might do is you might need a color match, so if you have something let me change the color here to red or pink and then I want to do something else you can actually pull the color let me move this over here so you can see if I click on this or a picture usually there's a little raindropper up here and if you click on it and then click on your new thing that you want to actually color it will you know what let me go ahead and just grab a photo hang on I think it's going to be easier to show you with a photo so let's go back to that shark. I'll show you my embarrassing kitchen photo. Okay. All right, so we'll take the old photo. No comments, please. I know that looks hideous. <laughs> so, so let's say I want my text to be orange, like this shark, if you're trying to color match. I'm going to come over here. Now, I'm not making this pretty while I'm talking to you guys. I'm basically just showing you the basics here. So let's say I want to come out and I want that to be this color. Hang on a second. Of course now I can't get it to get, pick up the color. Oh, for pity's sake. Yeah, there we go. You have to click on this first. Then you come over to whatever color you want it to be. See how it changed my font at the top to that dark orange and then I just click again and you can actually take your whatever object you have that color and you can make your font that color which just really helps with a color palette but again down here it was really hard for me to find something so I actually ended up doing a label because my husband said the heart looked really ghetto so I was like but I was in a hurry trying to get the sponsored post done you know how that goes so Oh, of course. Okay, I'm not I'm not going to log in for the Royale, but I just want to at least show you get the basics here. So what I had to do is I had to take an object and cover it, and I just put text text in it and I made it smaller. It looked better in the actual one. But let's say here I want this to be the same thing. You know, I want it to be a dark color. I'm going to do my same color matching. And this is where it really for something like this, I might need I would usually probably have to go into Photoshop. And then I want to add text and make it pop, so I'm just going to make it white. Let's center that. 
So you get the idea. Like I said, I'm not going into great detail here because I want to, you know, we don't have a ton. I don't want to take up a ton of your time, but you just get the idea here. So then, you know, obviously you can also put um, frames around them. Okay, you can do other effects. You can do putting backgrounds on textures. Hang on a second. See there, if I wanted to make it, you know, bokeh or, or paint looking, or does that say bokeh? Okay, so there, you know, obviously you can just play around, mess around if you want to make a brick background. See, look, that's that would actually be really cute for a lot of photos. I need to try that one out. Okay, but moving down here, now they have some new themes where you can go in and you can grab, you know, all kinds of like frosty hat and eyes, you know, different things like that. Oh, that's an upgrade. Okay, well, some of them are not necessarily upgrades. Let me see if one or maybe these, maybe all of these are. I'm sorry, I should have told you my dogs might bark while we're on the phone, or on the video, I mean. Okay, so Kringle caps. There you go. So all kinds of de there, and they're really expanding this whole area here. I mean, every holiday now, they're coming out with new themes to use, so I'm guessing they're trying to expand what they're doing. So that's kind of an overall basics of PicMonkey. If you have specific questions, of course, ask me in the group and I will definitely, definitely show you, you know, how to, to do things more in depth if you need me to. Um, but I just, I think PicMonkey is pretty self-explanatory. So that's, that's kind of what I wanted to go over with you, you know, just to get you at least started if you didn't know anything about it. It's uh, PicMonkey is P-I-C-M-O-N-K-E-Y dot com. P-I-C-M-O-N-K-E-Y dot com, so pick monkey. Um, one other thing I did want to talk to you guys about uh, while we're on here is we will probably have a whole video on infographics, but there are actually, they're actually also the number two kind of thing to get repinned. You um, often, these are things where they have informational, uh, you know, see all kinds of informational data. To be honest with you, as a deal blogger, I have never done this, but I know that they do get really great repins on them. And if it's something that, you know, at some point I'm sure we'll do a video on it. There are some free infographic uh, creators out there that are awesome that you can easily do on. But I'll be honest with you, I think it's pretty time consuming to do these. And unless I had, you know, if I were a doing constantly like you know maybe I would have more reason now that I have a group that I'm teaching you know more about Pinterest you know to show you Pinterest infographics or something like that or maybe if you want to do how much coupons save you in a year or something like that then yes you could do these but for the most part when you're under time constraint I'd probably rather put that time into a content evergreen post than I would into creating an infographic just for Pinterest because there are things that that you know that can get repinned much quicker quicker that you're not wasting your time um, but again like I said I do want you to know that they are heavily repinned as well they are very very much popular so um, the other thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to show you my most pin one of my most pin pins ever I actually was at school one day and the kindergarten teacher or first grade teacher's daughter works at Michael's and I pinned this to many 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 different boards and it's been pinned I don't even know how many times I would have to go I'd ha I don't actually analyze my I don't actually look at my analytics as much as probably what I should because most days I'm too busy trying to repin to get followers so I don't um, I should probably do that a little bit more and we'll I'll work on that now that we're doing the group I'll probably be checking my own analytics better but this is one of my most repin pins aside from my Kindle freebie list that I do every day. That's my other one that gets repinned a lot because it's free. So, all right. Well, we've been on the, the video here for about 24 minutes. This is just to get everybody started. Those, especially those of you that might be new. And if you're unsure, I'm going to take the next few minutes to talk about how to create a board and how to repin pins. So those of you that already know how to do that can kind of tune out. And those of you that really do need the very basics, stick around and I will show you how to do that. So for those of you that are leaving, have a great day. And for those of you that need to stay, we'll be we'll be talking about the, the basics here. So moving on, if you're going to, once you've created your Pinterest profile, also what, one thing if you're newer, you need to know is up here is where all your updates are. This is where if people have invited you to a group board, I have not done this Let's Pack Lunch forever. I just let it there. I, I should decline it, but I want to leave it there as an example for you guys. You would accept it. And this is all also where it shows you where people have 
either commented or repinned your pin or you know this this is like your status this is like your activity update for Facebook only on Pinterest right here so basically you want to go to your boards which is where I'm at or wait no I'm sorry I'm in my pins you want to go to your boards and if you're going to create a board you're going to come over here and create a board or holiday wish list right now I'm just doing a board for example I might do a pintastic group you can actually make a board secret if you don't want anybody to see it so I'll probably set that to secret because I don't want that showing up but normally you would choose a category so for me it's gonna be education so I'm gonna be teaching it with that board um, I'm gonna be being pins to benefit fantastic group on there you would want to describe it put an SEO friendly description in here normally like so for example if it's about crafts or Hol uh, holidays you would want to put the exact holiday you know crafts do it yourself you want to be very specific here with your words and right now I'm not adding a map we'll get into that in another another lesson so then I would click on create board and when I create that board it's not going to have I'm not sure if I can have a fourth secret board oh, I guess I can okay so what you're gonna do now is you can just start pinning to that board it will show up as you're pinning in your list so I'm going to go back to just now obviously I'm this is not something I would put in the Pintastic group but for the sake of time here I would scroll down I would find Pintastic group I would click on it and I would pin it to that now that's going to come up as the automatic group cover so let me go back to my boards and show you on my Pintastic group which is going to be hard to find out of a hundred boards here probably down at the bottom we will see the elf on the shelf hopefully oh because it's under secret okay good so that's already down here and of course the picture isn't loading but normally here like if I only have one if you only have one picture in your board see I have my own elf on the shelf board here I've only pinned one thing to it I haven't added the other people that want to be added yet that's actually a group board um, or is going to be you can see that only one photo means that's the cover so that's why you kind of always want to have at least a couple a couple photos in a board so that you can pick out what you think is going to be the best cover so make sure when you're creating your boards that you try to pin a couple pictures you know rather quickly to it and then pick your best picture for that cover and then so that's how to create your boards you get the basic idea have a lot of different categories that way you can pin a lot of great content I mean even though I don't use this beautiful one a whole lot. There are times where you see something you think that is just absolutely gorgeous. I'm putting that into its own category. And sometimes it gets repins and sometimes it doesn't. But um, let me come down and show you like another one. Okay, so here's my winter fun. Luckily, I have a great picture already on that cover, but normally you wouldn't want to, you would want to have a couple pins in that board to pick your best one so let's go up to pins how to add a pin there's a co there's several different ways you come up here to the plus sign or you can come over here to add a pin if you're going to add it from a website you just click the URL so let me grab let me grab one from my page here and very quickly I need to post my next status update here if you don't mind real quick sorry we're gonna take a 10 second break in there okay now we're gonna come back just for the sake of time where did that go there it is and you're just gonna put the URL right in here and you're gonna click next and it's gonna bring up all the photos not only in that post but also that are on your main page now obviously I don't want to necessarily pin target but for the sake of time we're gonna do that and you're gonna pick your group whatever and then you're gonna to wanna to write a description about it and then you're gonna click pin it and you can select down here do you want it to post to Twitter or Facebook I generally sometimes I post to Twitter but I don't generally post my pins to Facebook that would clog my feed and our reach is already bad enough as it is you know with all the changes in Facebook this week so those are some of the basics of pinning also um, let me think there was one more thing I wanted to show you what was it Oh, so when you're pinning, you just go to Pinterest at the top here, and this is your feed. So obviously these are the things you can repin from other people. 
if you want to upload your own pins, that's when we do these other things. And when you upload a pin here, I forgot to tell you, this is where you just want an image from your computer, not a link to a website. I don't use that very often unless Pinterest is acting really wonky. I'll upload the photo. If it won't, if it won't like upload my URL, I will go in and add the photo and then put the link in the comments. That's not best practice. I only do that when face, when Pinterest is really not working. And there have been some times where I've definitely had to do that. So, so at least today we taught you how to um, create a board. Um, when you're organizing your boards, uh, also we taught you how to add pins. But let me go back to your boards. To organize your boards, changing the cover, you click here. If you just want to move it, which I'm going to move, you just click and drag it. Sometimes Facebook gets really wonky with that and it drives me nuts. Um, it'll move itself all around. Let me find my holiday Christmas board. I'm going to try to move that to the top. See, this is, I'm even behind on that. i got to get down here because there are six less days between Christmas and Thanksgiving this year, and I think it's just caught us all off guard. I haven't had a chance to do all that, but mine says holidays Christmas, and obviously I did not pick the best cover for it if I can't find it. So let me see here. I want to move that back up to the top. Unless I already have it up here. Holidays Easter. Mm -hmm. That's weird. Well, I'll look for that. I don't want to waste your time looking for it, but I'll find it. And I'll at least move this Christmas one up. Oh, maybe I changed it just to Christmas, but I need to go back in and make that holidays Christmas then. But yeah, so that's what you how that's is how easy it is to maneuver your boards around. You just basically have to click and drag them from one area to the other. So I could technically move all of these. It does tend to group all your group boards at the bottom, and the way you can tell it's a group board is by this little symbol of a group of people right here. But then, see then down here it throws in some of my other ones, so I don't know why it does that. But it often will clump your group boards in a big group and make sure you know that then some of your other ones are still down here. Here we go. Oh, I did pick a good cover. How did I miss that? You guys probably saw that and were like, right there it is. So this is it can be cumbersome. See what I mean? If you don't get really careful, it's like, oh my gosh. All right, so we're going to keep moving that up. I tend to just stop every few rows. So you want you want the top row to be current and relevant to people coming to your your board, your main follow page. All right, so there. I'm going to put the two Christmas ones right there at the very front. So then when people come to my boards, they're seeing the Christmas ones at the top. So, so those are the basics of creating boards, creating pins, group boards. Um, one other thing I'll show you in here is how to create your own group board. You can take any board and invite other people to it. You just go down here and say who can pin, and then you invite them. As soon as you invite somebody and they accept, it becomes a group board. So um, also you can delete your board from here, but it says, you know, you can't undo this, so be careful. But that's basically all you do is when you want to add somebody to a group board, you just come in here and invite them either typing in their, let's see if I can find stuff. Okay, there. So you can type their username, just start typing it in. Or you can invite them by email. If you click invite, hang on one second. I don't know if my own will come up or not. But usually you can invite by email as well. For a couple of weeks, I could not get the email invite to work, and P Pinterest on their, you know, had listed that they knew that they had that issue, and and people were aware of it, but it lasted several weeks. So, so anyways, and you can see even here, I need to go in and put SEO friendly, um, SEO friendly things in here. So I might say um, coupons, frugal, coupon deal deals, sweepstakes contests. And more. I separated them by commas. If you want to write a sentence, you can, but I, I prefer to do the, the commas. This would probably be, hmm. I hate to put in other. A lot of times if I can't find one, I do education because you're like teaching people how to save money in a way, so we'll put it there, I guess. Even though it's really, let me look again. Illustrations, home decor, humor. All right, why don't we just go with other then? So that's, you know, you're going to want to make sure that your boards have things that are linked to them. 
or have SEO descriptions in them, I'm sorry. Also, one other thing that I recommend doing is on my boards, if you do a lot of reviews, which I do, and I'm still in the process of getting them to pin to pin uh, to be pinned. You can actually have a, a like okay here. I also have for my YouTube videos debtfreespending.com TV. I also have a review board. I think it's it's called Products. So that's another place that you can kind of put that if a brand wants to market with you, you can show them. Hey, I even have a Pinterest board, you know, for all the products and reviews that I'm doing. I should probably put that at the top of my board so that or close to the top so it's seen. So see, I'm, we're all learning together every day. So if you have any questions beyond these, please just put them in the group. We're at 35 minutes. I don't want to drag this on for you forever, but hopefully this gives you some ideas of at least how to get started. But make sure you're pinning 15 to 20 quality eye-catching posts every day, and that's going to be your number one way to start growing. All right, hope you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.